Boatman kept them true, nonetheless. First, I thought I'd like to be a cabin boy, because then I could wear a white apron and come out and shake the tablecloths out over the rail for all my friends to see me. Then I thought, no, no, I'd rather be that fellow who stands on the end of the gangplank with the rope in his hand, because he's particularly conspicuous. Well, these were just daydreams. They were too heavenly to be contemplated as real possibilities. And then, by and by, one of our local boys went away. He was gone for a while. When he came back, he was an apprentice engineer, or striker, on a steamboat. Well, this shook the very bottom out of our Sunday school teaching. Now, this boy was notoriously worldly, whereas we were exactly the reverse. And yet here he was, raised up to this eminence, and we were left below in misery and obscurity. There was nothing generous about his greatness either. Whenever his boat tarried in our town, he always managed to have a rusty bolt to scrub. And he would sit on the inner guard and he would scrub it where we could all see him and envy him and loathe him. And when his boat was laid up, he'd come back home and he would lure it around town in his blackest, greasiest clothes so that nobody could forget that he was a steamboat. And he used all kinds of steamboat technicalities in his talk, as though he were so used to them, he forgot mere normal folks couldn't understand it. He talked about the starboard side of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> in an easy, natural way, to make one wish he was dead. <laughs> and he was always talking about St. Louis like an old native. He would refer casually to the time he was strolling past the planter's house, or when he was walking up 4th Street. Or we talk about the time there was a fire, and he took a turn on the brakes of the old big Missouri. Then he'd go on and lie about how many towns the size of ours burned down there that day. Now, mind you, there were two or three boys in our town who had long been figures of some distinction, because they had been to St. Louis once, and had a vague, general idea of his wonder. Well, their day of glory was over now. They fell into a humble silence, learned to disappear when the ruthless cub engineer approached. The fellow had money, too. And hair boy. <laughs> An ignorant silver watch with a showy brass chain. He wore a wide leather belt and he used no suspenders. <laughs> if ever a boy was cordially admired and hated by his comrades, this one. <coughs> oh, and no girl could resist his charms. He cut out every boy in the village. Now, when his boat blew up at last, <laughs> uh, well, it diffused a kind of tranquil contentment among us, such as we hadn't known for months. But when he turned up again the next week, alive, <laughs> Battered and bandaged, came to church, the shining hero wandered over by everyone. Well, it seemed to us that the partiality of providence for an undeserving reptile had reached the point where, well, it was open to criticism. 